Hi everyone and welcome to Nadia on the Run. I'm Nadia Colucci, co-founder of North Compass Realty. As a native here to San Diego and real estate agent, I'm driving up and down the coastline all the time, in and out of appointments, meeting up with friends. And one cool benefit to that is I get to meet a lot of cool locals all throughout the county. And Nadia on the Run is a great platform for me to share those with you. And so definitely check out NadiaOnTheRun.com. You can see our blog and check out more of our local favorites and talented guests that we have featured on our show. Speaking of talented guests, today I am welcomed by Lauren Griffith, <laughs> fitness guru extraordinaire. She's amazing. And Lauren is um, the creator of the Lauren Griffith Collection. She's a former collegiate cheerleader and fitness figure competitor and now specializes in leading instructor workshops for yoga, bar, and sculpt. She's been a fitness professional for over 20 years and strives to help others achieve their personal best through her fun yet challenging workouts. Hi, Lauren. Hi. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. I'm super excited because you're going to show us some really cool stuff today. We've got like top five exercises, not only to stay fit for summer, but throughout the year. You're going to show us some great equipment that you actually created, which yes. is even better. And then one of my personal things that I really need is how do I like stay loose and stretched at the office? I'm constantly like this or I'm driving and I think a lot of people are. So you're going to go through all of that today and uh, maybe give us some help, helpful tips on how to stay healthy and yet active and lead a good life. How about that? Absolutely. You ready? Got it. Okay, yeah. good. Why don't you tell us a little bit about how you got started? I mentioned your all your accolades, but how'd you get started in the fitness world? So growing up playing sports, yeah. and then my mom was a group fitness instructor. Oh. So in high school, I started going to the gym with her, taking aerobics classes, oh, fun. and just followed that love into college. I uh, worked part time uh, at a local gym at a college at Washington State University oh, nice. in Washington State, okay. and uh, so I started teaching classes, and I was che cheerleading in college. Um, when I was done with college, I just continued my passion and um, continued to teach classes and train clients yeah. like I do today. That's amazing. Yeah. Well, and it's easy to do. It's, it sounds like it's almost part of your DNA. You're, your mom doing it, you started so young, mm -hmm. and now you get to share it with so many others here locally. Where can people find you teaching? So I teach at a studio in Carlsbad called okay. Fortis Fitness Yoga Lux. Yes, it's right by my office. Yes, yeah. and um, <laughs> what's great about it is we offer everything from hot yoga, through a variety of fitness classes, and we have childcare. So oh, it's very, um, my clientele, my demographic typically is a lot of moms um, or women that are looking you know, to get fit. And so it's a great place for moms that have children that they can bring their kids yes. um, if they're not in school. So there's no excuse, right? That's, that's <laughs> kind of the thing yes. we have. Well, one thing too, Lauren, Lauren's doing for us today, which is amazing, she's offering a fun giveaway. So mm -hmm. if you sign up, naughtyontherun.com, and hit join us, what'll happen, it will send you um, the information you'll get uh, the chance to win a half hour free consult with Lauren and all of her equipment that she's sharing with us here today. So we'll get it over to you. So locals only, sorry, the San Diego proud here, <laughs> but everyone um, just sign up. It'll be easy. We'll get it to you. And then you can start, actually, you're going to demonstrate how to use some of those so people can, can get familiarized with it. Absolutely. Okay. So it's yoga, bar, sculpt, what are the other ones? High intensity interval training. Okay, T that one's intense for me, I um, think. Boot camp, um, pretty much. I've been doing this for over 20 years, so I teach I teach it all. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That is, that's great. Oh, that's yeah. really good. Um, what motivates you to stay on track every day? Is it, you know, being responsible to yourself or accountable to your clients? Like, what is it? Or is it just at this point second nature for you? Yeah, I, I mean, I've been active for so long. So yeah. personally, for my personal self, um, I I really enjoy. It's a, it's not something I have to think about. It's like it's just a part of who I am. Yeah. You know, I, I wake up I'm like, you know, um, what am I going to do active today? Yeah. Um, and part of, part of the reason that motivates me to continue my per for my personal self is just the way I feel. Yeah. I, I, um, when I exercise, when I eat right, uh, I, I feel my best. So yeah. it's hard not to want to continue to that same type of lifestyle. Right. Um, but when it comes to my clients, what really motivates me is um, seeing their, their success. Yeah. So uh, it's a very fun environment going to teach people are very uh, kind and um, have so much respect for you yeah. and so it's fun like just keeping things fresh creative you know uh, when I'm teaching group classes I, I love the music I really have fun okay. um, picking out fun playlists picking out new exercises and with my private clients always looking for ways to challenge them and help them reach their goals oh that's amazing and I've actually heard that recently they had to expand the studio because you have so many people that come that they yes. had to open it up which is great that's yes. a true testament it's to fun. how amazing you are yeah. for so many people too yes. yeah. so I actually thought how fun because you do the private but getting a group of girls together and 
you know, having you come to the house or something and doing like a, you know, we always get together for wine nights and we always <laughs> do things like that. Why yes. not start with a fun, you know, exercise, group exercise mm -hmm. activity and then have the wine after, right? <laughs> Sounds like a great plan. All right, let's do that. Yes. We'll, maybe we'll plan that and we'll film that too. Um, what's a way to help someone get motivated that maybe just doesn't have, you know, it in their DNA as much as you do, or it's not as natural to them. Maybe they weren't you know, um, really well versed in sports growing up or they didn't have that exposure. What's a good way to just kind of help someone get out of their chair and trying a couple things? What are some goals people can set? Yeah, I think uh, the key is figuring out really what motivates you first. Okay. Um, because if, if there's not something that's motivating you to do something, you're probably not going to want to do it anyway. Good point. Um, but a lot of times things that inspire people to want to start getting moving, maybe they have a special trip, mm -hmm. um, maybe they're getting married, okay. um, you know, maybe summertime's coming along. Um, so there's all different reasons people get inspired. Or maybe they have health concerns that they're trying to make shifts, um, eating better. Um, maybe they are feeling sluggish and they're looking for ways to, to gain more energy. Yeah. Um, so, you know, starting with the goal of what, what really what um, what you want to accomplish and then being realistic if you haven't moved for years yeah, then right. you know starting off something like you know walking brisk walking um, just getting up moving maybe it is going to do a yoga class to get you know stretching whatnot okay. or someone that's um, maybe been more active and figuring out ways to make up their you know activity level yeah. or integrate weights um, with their cardio or different things of that nature that's smart yeah. all really good tips you guys so speaking of good tips <laughs> what are your top five exercises that you could do maximize full body on the go, quick, easy for this summer. You mentioned moms are a big part of your clientele. Mm -hmm. You know, they have children at home, jobs, whatever. They're being pulled in so many directions. I think everybody is to some degree today. You know, I feel like our lives are just so busy. Correct. So you ready to show me five top exercises that yes. you, you think we can all do at home, yep. pretty easy, or in our office, on wherever the go, we anywhere. are. On the go, I yes. like it. Let's do it. So Celeste is going to demonstrate our first exercise is a squat. Uh, this is one of my favorite full body exercises and great for warm up. Yeah. Um, the real benefit of squats is it's going to help you build heat in your lower body, um, but also it's a great way just to get so you can see through just getting some great movement through upper body as well. For sure. Um, the key if you are newer to this exercise um, is really just um, look for if you have any sensitivity in the lower body through the knees, you can limit the range of motion. Um, if you want to progress as you start, you know, uh, getting stronger in this posture, you can start to go deeper into the pose, um, and that's going to offer more challenge to the lower body as well. Right. Um, but key is bringing the weight back into the heels, keeping the chest up, and engaging through the core to help support your low back. That's a great one. Celeste, you're doing a great job <laughs> motivating me to do one today. <laughs> no, it looks great. Yeah. And so you mentioned the knees. I, I have knee issues as well. So. I always know that getting your booty all the way back mm -hmm. is ideal, yes. but if not, you just don't, you limit the range of motion, but yeah. it's still giving you a workout. It's still building up blood flow and getting that moving through the body. So Absolutely. that's a great uh, quick warm up. And you said you could do these for 30 seconds, a minute, depending on. Yeah, so it's really just depending on your fitness level, what you feel comfortable with, but starting with probably 30 seconds to a minute is a good amount of time Okay. Um, to really get the body warmed up. That's not bad, you guys, we got one minute. All right, what's <laughs> next? Let's see what minute so two is. lunges are excellent as well. Okay. So Les is demonstrating a reverse lunge. Um, in my experience in teaching over the years, especially when I teach a group class, I find reverse lunge versus stepping forward into a lunge, um, again, is gonna offer a little bit more support for the knees. Okay. Um, it's a little bit easier for people to transition, especially when they're alternating from side to side. Yeah. So she's demonstrating alternating. It also can be done just staying stationary in one leg for you know, a period of time or so many reps and then okay. switching to the other side. Smart. Um, but great, again, a great way to, the, her, her whole body's moving, so yeah. she's building that heat, she's warming the body, um, and it's great for strengthening and toning through the lower body as well. Okay. So one of my other favorite exercises is walking out to a plank and then doing a push-up. Okay. So this is challenging for many reasons <laughs> because it is really uh, fully using the uh, entire body. Wow. Um, the benefit as you come up, she's getting a nice stretch as so she reaches her arms up. And then as she comes down, she's actually gonna get a stretch to the back of the legs, through the hamstrings, the calves, all the way up to the glute. And then of course the push-up is gonna be strengthening through the upper body. For sure. Now because push-ups are a challenging exercise, yep. um, one thing that she can do when she comes out to a high plank is she can lower her knees down to the mat first, then lower the chest down to the mat. And then as she presses back up, she can float the knees and then walk back up. Perfect. So that's a great place for people to start. Um, but if you do have sensitive low back, just be very careful when you hinge forward to bend the knees, um, to help
help support you on the way out. Oh, that makes sense. Looks great. Yeah. So she can stay in plank, um, since she's already down there. <laughs> um, mountain climbers, okay. um, bringing the knees in towards the chest. So it can be done quickly, which is what's traditionally what mountain climbers are. This okay. is really great for building the heart rate, um, really taking up the intensity level. I can tell she's feeling it right now. <laughs> um, but most importantly, keeping a slight bend in the elbows because it is offering a little bit more impact, okay. um, but it's going to get your heart rate up. Now, if you find this to be a little too intense, she can slow it down about half the speed and just do alternate knees, exhaling every time the knee comes forward. Again, we're really building heat um, and strengthening through the core at the same time. Now, she is in high plank, which is one of my other favorite exercises is just holding either in high plank. Um, if you do stay up on the hands, what you want to do is keep a slight bend in the elbows okay. um, just so that you're not locking through the arms, drawing the belly button in, much like a corset, so you're sucking everything in and up towards the spine and pressing the heels down towards the earth. Now some people will have sensitivity in the wrists, so another alternate to high plank is forearm plank. can be done either palms together or palms flat is a little bit more challenging. Okay. Um, with palms flat, the key is walking those elbows in so they're behind the wrists, um, but same thing. What we'll see a lot of times um, here is if you start to get like a sway in the low back, it means you need to draw that belly button in to really keep them that, that um, low back nice and stable. But holding plank for 30 seconds, building to a minute, maybe two minutes is pretty challenging, wow. um, but great way to build strength through the core. Yeah, nice job, Celeste. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Now you also brought some amazing equipment with you, and this is part yes. of our giveaway again. So if you guys remember, sign up naughtyontherun.com and hit join us. And we have all of her uh, equipment there that we're going to be able to show you guys. Or you're actually going to demonstrate it for us today. And we have this as a possible giveaway. So why don't you walk us through what some of um, what some what they each are rather, yes. and then what are some exercises that go with each one? Perfect. Yeah. So what I'll um, we have. There's the resistance bands, okay. um, which by far has probably been one of my most popular products that people love um, for various reasons. Um, resistance bands tend to ha have the opportunity to snap a lot, so they break okay. right? yeah. um, after, from, from use, and it, it typically happens pretty quickly. Um, but the other thing that's really great about these bands is they don't roll. So if you've ever taken resistance bands and put, try to put them over like your knees, and yep. you're welcome to yeah, hold one. Um, when you put over, a lot of times they'll roll up and it turns into this, you know, Twisty, twisty thing. <laughs> and then like cuts and, into yeah, your, it, yeah, yeah, it's uncomfortable. It feels horrible. Oh, this is So smart. what's nice about this, it's, it's not going to roll up, um, and it has kind of this jelly finish. Yeah. So it lays really flat. So it's it's um, oh, I like great. These. These smart. Um, give a one-year warranty, but I've had this product for years, and I, I still to this day haven't had one snap. So oh. it really is a good quality product. That's awesome. Um, the other product um, are these toning balls, and they're one pound, so you can feel it. Oh, nice. And they're small enough that you can grip them in, in your hand. So these these I love to use with clients because when you're doing high intensity interval or any kind of real cardio burst, yeah. just by adding these, you can, these are even things you could use on a brisk walk, yeah. right? If you're oh, out yeah, sure. at, um, to get the arms, it's light enough that it's not going to offer you know too much weight, but it's going to let you take your work up to the next level. Right. Oh, that's great. And these are easy. I mean, how convenient and how easy is this to stash in your house? Yes, like in your house, in your suitcase. Even, yeah. Right? So yeah. It, it, um, really a lot of this, when I designed it, was designed for someone that is on the go, that is traveling. Um, the agility bar was one of the first products I created, um, and actually I had measured it, designed to fit into a travel suitcase. Oh, but that. nowadays you probably have to check it. Yeah, <laughs> um, but what's really cool about with agility bar is it's both a, can be used like hand weights, with two three pound bars. Okay. But it also um, can be, it's very versatile because you can build it into one six pound bar. Oh, that's nice. So the create, where this, this, Create was created. I was actually pregnant with my first child in Hawaii, Aww. and I was in a gym and I was playing. You know, balance. There's been there's bars. There's weighted bars that have been around a long time. Sure. So there's it's nothing new, but I started you know kind of thinking about how you know how could we travel with a bar like this, right. or what are some different things how you could use it. So not only can it be used, um, you know, in upper body exercises as a weight, mm -hmm. but also used for balancing. That's so awesome. um, I can hand some of this stuff to Celeste, I'd so she can it. show show Celeste, us some of the different, you mind grabbing it? different, different things. This is so be let so me cool. give you. I'm going to give you the bar too, so you can okay. show that first since you're standing. Um, so um, if she comes up onto her toes, you can see she can use balance, and you can do. If, if you've ever done any bar classes, uh -huh. um, they're little ba ballet infused inspired yep. classes. Um, she can come into like bend the knees into like a plie. Um, she can rise into releve. Um, so she's using she's using the bar more as a tool right. um, as for balance. But because it's freestanding and not attached to a wall, she's having to 
use a lot more balance, activate through the core, um, so it's very challenging that matter. Um, but she can also grab the bar and come in like a second position and do things like bicep curls. She could do oh, uh, also a variety of different um, upper body exercises yeah. as well. Um, so this has been one of my most popular products in the sense it's just very versatile. You can travel with it. It's easy to stash like you put underneath your bed, That's perfect. in a closet, what things of that nature. And I mean, you're not also doing these for 20, like again, you can do these for a minute at a time. I mean, what we've gone through so far, if you do everything for one minute, it's yes. five minutes and now six with this. Like, yes, it's and not if, if, you go to, and if you go to my website on body, um, bodybylauren.com, I do have um, videos that accompany these um, products as well. Wonderful. So there's tons of great ideas that people can do from home. Okay, very cool. Um, but let me give you some of the other products. So I have the band and the balls. Um, so with the resistance band, she can demo how you can bring it above the knees just so you can kind of see how it really lays flat on the thighs. Um, but resistance band is really cool because it's, you can do a lot of the exercises that you would do traditionally but just adding a little bit of layer yeah. of, of challenge, right? There you go. Um, oh, there she goes. Now she's doing some cool <laughs> things you can do high intensity. Um, so the resistance bands can go above the knees. They can also go above your ankles. Um, and it's um, fun to do for on the floor um, as she comes down into more of a tabletop position. Um, this is great for the booty. Oh, I like it. So you can take these bands, and again, if you had a traditional resistance band, there's no way it would stretch this far, and it would probably snap on you. So that's what's so cool about these bands. But she's she's targeting her booty. She's targeting her hamstrings. Um, this is a most one of the most popular exercises women love to do. Uh, really the donkey ready. kick. Yep. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, so very versatile. Um, and then lastly, the weighted balls um, are great to use. Um, as I was saying, you could use it as simple as a, a walk okay. as a one pound, but you can also do like static runner is a really good exercise um, that's considered high intensity, getting the heart rate up. Now something like this, because it is a high intensity workout, um, again, 30 seconds is being a good marker for most people, yeah. but it doesn't mean that you could just do one rep, you can do one um, more than one set. So for maybe sure. she would do you know, two to three to four sets depending on her fitness level. Yeah, and like, it's, put it in between the other ones. Like, you know, I Correct. think maybe doing this, uh, you know, all at once can be much for yes. some people. So, yeah. and now all these products, this is part of your giveaway, which we can't thank you enough. We're yes. so excited. And I know you guys are all excited mm -hmm. as well. So, and you have the videos that accompany how to use them. So online, so definitely make sure to sign up there and get this going. This is perfect for summer, easy to do when you travel. Like you said, it fits perfectly in your suitcase. You yes. add two pounds. Now, is there a difference in the colors or some yes. stronger Good than others? Good question. So there's three different resistance levels. Uh, the pink is the light resistance. Okay. Uh, the orange would be your medium, and okay. then blue is your heavy. Okay. So, you know, it just dep again, depending on your fitness level, you can start with one. Um, some people like to have the variety of having all three bands, depending on what kind of exercise you're doing. Okay. And they can kind of play around um, and offer more or less challenge based on their needs. Perfect. I yeah. love it. Well, that's great. Mm -hmm. Now, do you mind if we have Celeste show us some of those stretches we were talking about. Yes. So I think everyone, you know, most people were sitting at our computers or we're driving and we're hunched over. I don't think that we even realize it. I mean, I don't have the best posture, so I'm aware <laughs> of it. You have great posture, but again, <laughs> it's a little different. So what are some things people can do at the office? Like a couple minutes, maybe find a workout buddy at the office to keep you accountable to do these things. Because ever since I've been following you, now I see the impact. I do it myself. I was doing ragdoll yesterday from the office. So <laughs> there we go. Why don't you so share? you know the most common um, things I run into with clients that you know either work in office or in the car is a lot of times they're they're starting they could, that's kind of rotated. I mean even now with our phones and, and yeah. we're on iPads or computers. So getting ways to really open up through the chest, you know, open up through the side body, open up through the hips, this you know the spine, um, the low back. Those are all things that people typically those are areas that they need to improve on. Okay. Um, so some of my favorite stretches. Um, being a yoga instructor, these are these really come um, very um, natural to me because they're ones that we do in class. Um, but crescent moon stretch is really awesome because it's opening up through the side body. Okay. Um, so she's demonstrating that. The key with this one is you can do, she's got her feet about hips distance apart, which is gonna be more s stable for people that are you know, um, newer to, to doing these kind of stretches, um, want a little bit more support. Um, if you bring the big toes together, it's gonna be a little bit more challenging to balance. Okay. Um, but what she's doing is she's squeezing her palms together, she's interlacing her fingers and releasing her index fingers, and just she can either hold on one side or she can even move side to side. But if someone went, if someone at home wanted to try it, I would aim for maybe trying to do 15 seconds to 30 seconds on one side and then 15 seconds to 30 seconds on the opposite okay. side. Okay, well that's fair, it's just a good stretch. Yeah. Um, also another great uh, stretch I enjoy is 
a supported back bend. Okay. So just bringing the hands, you know, resting just on your back, low back, um, right there in the hips, and then um, just softly bringing the gaze up towards the sky. Now, depending on your flexibility, maybe just gazing up at the ceiling is this as far as you're going to go. But over yeah. time, you can start to walk your eyes along the ceiling towards the back of the room that you're standing in, and it just offers that nice back extension through the low back. And she's got a lot of flexibility. <laughs> now, I have neck problems, so I wouldn't be able to go far as far back. So yeah, how would you so recommend with your altering? Neck, well, you just want to keep your neck more neutral, so you wouldn't look back as far. Um, you might even keep your gaze kind of to the high, you know, high diagonal okay. or the horizon, and just focus more on the, the low back. Nice. So, um, and a neutral neck is just keeping it in the same alignment of the spine. Okay. Yeah. Good to know. Good question. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I'm going to have her come down to the floor because um, one one thing a lot of my clients talk about is their low back, and especially if you're sitting, like yes. your desk or you're sitting, um, you know, in a car. Um, you know, if you could find somewhere in the office, or maybe you work in an office that they don't mind you come down and do a cat cow on the floor. <laughs> you know, just pop your. Oh, mat nowadays right next they have like workout rooms <laughs> for you in half these yes. offices. So. Yeah, offices, whatnot. Um, but cat cow is really awesome because you're getting both the flexion, <clears throat> it, so you're going back and forth through the spine. So you get the rounding of the spine, and then and then she kind of comes forward. It's also opening up through the chest. This is a great stretch to integrate with breath. Um, so it, um, one thing we know, especially if you're in a high stress environment at work, um, you know, coming back to breathing is such a great tool right. just to help relax you. Yeah. Um, so this is a great one that will integrate breath with movement. So inhaling as her chest comes forward, opening up through the heart, through the chest, and then exhaling as she rounds through the spine, really drawing the belly button in and gazing towards um, her back. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, another one is coming to her back. One of the things people complain about a lot um, is when they're driving in a car, seeing the desk is their hips. Yep. So it's really important that we keep the hips open. Uh, figure four stretch is, is a very gentle stretch. Okay. Um, at first, if you're pretty tight through the hips, you may not be able to interlace the fingers behind the leg. Um, but you could even start by just drawing, you know, without the leg crossed, just drawing the leg in close to the body as you can. Okay. Um, but keeping the head and neck completely relaxed is really important and pressing the tailbone towards the earth as you draw the knee a little closer in towards the body. Okay. Um, great hip opener. And as you progress, you can even use your elbow to kind of press away um, and to intensify the stretch. But this is a really good one. And again, you'd want to hold it for at least 30 seconds, maybe even stay here for a minute okay. to really allow yourself to open up. And then lastly, um, my, my supine twist is a really excellent one for low back. Um, the key with this one is you fold one leg across the body, and then you can bring your hand just to gently press on the leg to encourage the leg to fall. But the key is the opposite shoulder. You want to also keep on the ground, and the gaze can go the opposite direction of the leg. Um, this one, if you stay here long enough, you'll notice the leg to start to relax and to fold. But the key to any of these stretches is to really allow yourself to go further through the stretch is to breathe. Yeah. Because our body naturally has this defense mechanism where it tells us, okay, this is as far as I want to go. Right. So we have to let allow ourselves to go further and just stay there a little bit longer and take a nice deep breath will help encourage that as well. That's awesome. Yeah. A lot of athletes are doing yoga just for that same practice because they're probably a little bit more high impact, high intensity, and there's not a lot of breathing thought that goes into uh, almost like relaxing your body with those deep breaths, right? Your body kind of yeah. loosens a minute or it stops going yeah. into defense mode, like you said. So. And it's important with any any fitness routine, whether you're a runner, whether you walk, whether you lift weights, whether you're, you do fitness classes, that you are finding that balance. Yeah. Because um, it's just as important as to find that strength and and have those fun fitness you know classes like you do Zumba. Yeah. Um, <laughs> is also to find that time to pause and to stretch um, to really avoid injury. Right. Right. And, and stretching is important in general. I mean, everyone's yes. like, it's all the craze. So these stretches would work for even after a workout. Is mm -hmm. it more important to stretch before or after a workout? After workout okay, would, be, after. would be best. And okay. it's not to say that stretching before isn't good. So like for example, um, if you were going to do something with weights or something like you were going to do uh, a squats with weights, okay. it would be very important for you to warm up with doing squats without weights. Okay. So we typically want to mirror whatever exercise we're doing. We want to warm up the body in that same way beforehand. Okay. But from actually going into some of these deeper stretches, I would recommend doing it more at the end of the workout while you're warm okay. to really help with the flexibility. That's great. Yeah. Those are awesome. Thank you so much, Celeste. <laughs> <laughs> so let's wrap up here with you giving us some tips on how to stay healthy on the go mm -hmm. when you're traveling the summer, when you're out with kids and you're at a hotel or you're at a business meeting and you're traveling you know, some, somewhere, what are some tips that people can keep on the forefront or do or practice or put, implement, start putting into their daily routines 
to progress and see some difference, slowly but surely? Yes, I, you know, I think the key is goal setting. Okay. And I recommend clients, I, I cut, use Sunday as, as an example, you know, um, as a day that you look at your week ahead and you, you figure out whether it's, you know, for work or travel, like are you, are you, are you gonna be traveling? Or are you gonna be home? Um, what does your week look like? And then based off of that, where can you plug in your workouts, okay. right? Um, setting realistic goals, right? If you're just starting off, yeah. you know, maybe not shooting to do five days or six days a week, right. but maybe starting with a couple days a week. Um, getting a, a buddy, so someone you can work out with, accountability is really important. So if you're looking to work out you know, on your lunch break at work, maybe it's someone in the office that you guys can go for a walk together. Okay. Um, if, if you're somebody that you know once you get off work that there's no way you're gonna exercise unless you either go straight to the gym or go straight on a walk from your office, um, then making sure you have that you know, stuff with you so you can go straight from work. Okay. Um, so really, you just it's more just figuring out what's gonna work best for you. Um, and setting realistic goals yeah. so that you can feel when you are achieving those goals, you feel that reward that you want to continue. Right. Um, I think people can set sometimes too high of, of standards for themselves or yeah. expectations, and if they fall short of that, then sometimes it can almost work in the reverse that like, okay, I'm just not going to do it at all. Right. So, yeah, and that's um, discouraging. That's discouraging. So setting yes. realistic goals. Yes. If you don't move off to maybe you work out once a week, then try to go to two times a week and maybe include a walk. It's yes. summer, it's beautiful. Get out there, enjoy the beach, just walk along the 101. So small steps, obviously, like you were saying, there's no sense in trying to do the complete opposite. Just work yes. there so you feel accomplished and then can keep adding on from there. And, and, and if you don't have a workout buddy, yeah. then even having someone you can be accountable to. Mm -hmm. And just saying like, hey, these are my goals this week and this is what I'm trying to do. Because um, a lot of times with goal setting, a lot of it's you know writing it down, and a lot of it's also just verbalizing it and, and sharing it with somebody. Sure. To help you with accountability as well. I love it. Yeah. Talk, tell me a little bit about meal prepping. I know this on Sundays. Yes. Are, I, I try to do it, but yes. share with our audience why it's so important. Yeah, and meal prepping is is, is so important because um, you know if you are on the go, what we tend to do is we end up grabbing things when whatever we come across, right? Yeah. Whether at the gas station, um, maybe you're eating out at a restaurant. Um, whatever it is, but the more you can prepare ahead of time, um, maybe you don't have a lot of time during the week, so maybe you're cooking meals on Sunday, um, or at least organizing things so yeah. that when you know the week work day comes along, that you're just grabbing the stuff, the healthy food that you want to bring, putting it into whether you have a refrigerator, maybe you have it at the office, or right. maybe if you're on the go, maybe you have a cooler or something that you can bring with you, so you have it in the car. Um, really help you know bring you know be able to ha have you be prepared so you're not making bad choices. Yeah, that's really yeah. smart and yeah. very easy. Your go-tos. I know we talked about this off off camera, but we both love hard boiled eggs. I can eat them all day long. So a little salt on mine usually and a little splash of olive oil. I have the homage to my, you know, motherland, I guess, and being Italian. But um, grilled chicken or grilled pr protein, basically. Yeah, protein. Yeah. Grilled chicken just tends to be easier. It's easier to cook, prepare. And it, keep. Yeah. I mean, yeah. like fish would be horrible to, right, to take right. off this. You won't have any friends. <laughs> right. You won't have those partners walking with you after that. Yeah. Um, and then grilled ve or, uh, uh, raw veggies are great. Yeah. I mean, grilled veggies are great too, but raw veggies tend to be easy just to bring on the go. And some people like, you know, um, carrots with like hummus or something that's just like healthy. Beans are great too because they're a protein, um, might be more fulfilling. Um, some people like putting like almond butter, um, maybe some celery. Um, so there's a lot of ways, you know, even like nuts yeah. um, are all great little things that you can bring with you. Uh, we all just have to be careful with nuts because sometimes it go from a handful of nuts to a whole bag of nuts. Right. That's why <laughs> actually you can buy the little prepackaged yes. ones that are small because I know if that came in a big size, sure. I'd go through them all. And yeah. that's, that's a good point. So portion control right. um, and that stuff you can do again, you know, um, now reusable bags or however yeah. you kind of package things to pack with you or take with you on the go makes it much easier as well. And I think so many people have heard about it. Meal prepping, I think, though, makes so much sense because if it's there and it's easy and convenient, much like a quick drive through is even a Starbucks drive through and you mm -hmm. go get one of their little egg protein yeah. plates. <laughs> but I mean, that's those, if you look at the numbers, you sure. know, they also have the little, you know, starch in there as well. So if, if you could just prep that at home sure. and have it ready to go, then you just grab one of those. It's like a healthy, modern Lunchable. <laughs> yes, and it's typically right? more cost effective too. Yeah. So especially those that are trying to watch watch money when it comes to food and whatnot, it's meal prepping is, is always going to typically save you money than eating out. But does it not to say, if you do have to eat out, like if yeah. you are going to a restaurant, it's just more educating yourself on making good choices. You know, um, salads are sometimes people think is the most healthy thing to eat in the menu, but sometimes is over a thousand calories. But a lot of that comes from the, the dressing, right. comes from maybe the cheese or things like that. So just if you can educate yourself, then you can offer like dressing aside 
side or offer like a substitute like oil and vinegar. Yeah. Um, so there are ways to make you know good choices on the go, um, but just having good awareness when you are in a restaurant, um, seeing if they have a calorie menu sure. or even just asking the waiter, you know, it, how is it, how's the food prepared so that way you can stay on track. And I feel here in San Diego locally, that's on every menu now. I think yes. so many people are health conscious here and that's great. And I think, you know, traveling wise, maybe when you're traveling and you have to get in a hotel or whatever, see if the hotel has a gym and then you can plan maybe 15 minutes earlier that morning before you get to your meeting. You were saying something earlier about scheduling it like it's a business meeting. Yes, so you wouldn't flake on a business meeting most likely, so correct. you don't flake on your workout. Yes. So set realistic expectations. You're not gonna, you know, maybe you can't have 15 meetings a week, right? Yeah, so yeah. start with two or three yeah. and see how that goes. And, and meal prep, you don't have to do every meal prep, but you start little by little sure. and then work up to, yeah. God, hopefully looking like this. <laughs> you are such an inspiration. Thank, Thank you. you so much Thank for sure. I can see the excitement when you talk about it. I can tell it is a passion of yours and um, just very touched that you're willing to share it with our audience and every, all your uh, clientele and everyone that comes and works out with you. So uh, remember our giveaway. So Lauren's gonna give you a half hour free consulting and our, these amazing uh, exercise equipments that she has here. So the resistance bands, the agility bar, and the weighted ball. What do you call them? Weighted, weighted, balls, weighted balls. balls. There yeah, you go. Weighted. <laughs> <laughs> and in the meantime, I'd like to give a quick shout out to our local sponsors at Five Star Escrow and First American Title. They make all of this possible and allow me to keep up with fun things to do in San Diego and feature local talent like Lauren throughout the county. Thank you guys so much for your support. Lauren, thanks so much. Get a friend, get to one of her classes right in Carlsbad. She's amazing. And Body by Lauren and bodybylauren.com, right? You got there it. we go. All right. Thank you guys so much. And remember San Diego to stay on the go with Nadia on the run. Bye. Bye-bye.